Several weeks ago, a, an actor from Hollywood reported that he had been the victim of a racist and homophobic attack. When the report came out, uh, he said that he was in Chicago at 2 o'clock in the morning and that the attackers were using specific language um, to verbally assault him before the physical assault or during the physical assault and that he was on the phone with his manager at 2 o'clock in the morning in Chicago with later what we were told were two attackers who wore Make America Great Again hats outdoors in sub zero temperatures in Chicago. So it brought some doubts about it. And one of the, the first things I noticed about the language attributed to the attackers was it matched Jesse Smollett's language of attacking Donald Trump. The same type of language, similar language. So I was concerned that perhaps he may not be telling the truth. And then his manager came to his defense and said that the attackers had placed a noose on his neck. Now, in a lynching, the word place is not appropriate. It's soft, it minimizes. That told me the manager has a perception that this is being false. He's lying to us as well. I often say that a physical attack is personal. And this sometimes will lead to an objection where someone will say, but he didn't know the attackers, how can it be personal? It's personal to the victim whenever another person puts their hands upon them. It is intrusive, it is always personal because it's their physical body. They have instincts to keep themselves alive that are now being infiltrated upon. It's why we look for the language to reflect that. It's also why we say within a sexual assault, through the intimacy and what, the location of the actual attack, that the life of the victim will be impacted forever. The consequence of a sexual assault in the most intimate of places impacts them for the rest of their lives. So we look for this to match in language. I was attacked. I told the truth. And the discussion pretty much is over at that point. It's not what he said. In an interview with Good Morning America, as well as his own statement in a concert several days later, he did not link himself to the attack. He did not psychologically place himself where a victim would in the attack. The statement he made at his concert caused me to conclude he's being deceptive. Deception indicated. In the Good Morning America interview, the interviewer revealed her own bias. She knew that he was more angry about doubters than he was about the racist, homophobic, violent lynch mob to attackers. And that doesn't fit the language of a victim. So she asked him about that. And in her question, she told him the answer. You're more concerned about the attackers than the doubters, right? That sort of thing. He gave a rebuttal to her question. He was more concerned about the doubters. He said, you don't want to see the truth. He saved his venom for people who did not believe him. In spite of even the President of the United States tweeting support for him as a victim. But there are several things that he said within the interview that affirm the analysis. He said, listen, if I tell the truth, and in statement analysis, we allow a person's words to guide us. We don't interpret them, we listen to them, we submit to them, and we follow them. And if he is allowing for the truth to be a possibility only, then I can't say it's definitive, especially in the context of a physical attack. You can't unexperience a physical attack. You can't unexperience an assault or a sexual assault it's always there, and it's going to reflect the language. So if he's going to allow for doubt, and by the way, this need to be heard by someone who is constantly seeking attention, uh, someone who works for attention, in terms of the, the media exposure of someone that works in Hollywood, this tells us something is very wrong psychologically with him. But this allows for us to doubt his words, so he's allowing us to do that. And then he said, 
It's the truth, which does not have the pronoun I in it. I was attacked by two men. I told the truth. That would end it. He said, it's the truth. What's the truth? This is a psychological ejection of self as a victim of a physical attack from his own statement. In other words, he doesn't believe his own words. He said, I will never be the man that this did not happen to. Framing the words, this did not happen. In the negative, in the negative, analysts will recognize a double negative is very powerful. Remember we talk about the, the sign in the big glass window that says, do not throw rocks. It's provocative. It causes us to think. It's more sensitive. He gives it to us twice here. And regarding his motive, um, allegedly a, few, a week or two before the attack, there was an anonymous letter that was sent to uh, where he works. Uh, I have not seen it. I have not analyzed it. I would like to. But we have a motive that comes out. I don't need some MAGA hats as the cherry on top of some racist Sunday. Okay? This is also psychologically distancing language. I recognize the dog whistle of politics here. Um, his tweets were uh, vile towards the President of the United States January of 2017. The same language he ascribes to those who attacked him. He's projecting. He said, I don't hold my tongue. Some of the language here, some of you will recognize is the language of sex and play. I do wonder, and it's possible that he got into some form of an altercation over some form of sexual escapade that went on that night. But in terms of two MAGA hat wearing men who attacked him for being black, for being homosexual, and in the name of Donald Trump, he's lying. This is deception indicated. Victims of physical attack have a personal, experiential knowledge that comes out in the language even when traumatized. Because they can't unexperience what they went through. They can try to forget it, they can try to discard it. Um, the brain trauma, the trauma of the physical body, all comes together physiologically. And it comes out in the language. They will attach it to the language. When someone does the psychological distancing and the dancing and the manipulation that he does, it's deception indicated.